Uh, looks like we have a decent turnout. Thanks everyone for coming. Uh, we're excited to have you here. Um, I just want to thank you for joining us for the Entrepreneurial Mindset, How to Build a Career in Professional Communication on Your Own Terms. Uh, some of you may know me, may have had me in class before, um, or maybe worked together professionally. My name's Chelsea Thomas, and I'm a scholarly assistant professor here in the Murrow College. Um, and I focus on uh, two-way health communication dissemination, but also run a side agency, um, Personify PR, and so I uh, was lucky enough to have the opportunity to connect with all these wonderful entrepreneurs who are very involved in the communication industry and um, often either run their own firm or uh, work as an influencer. And so today we're going to get to hear from the experts, and they're going to talk to us and, and communicate in hopefully a very transparent and casual manner about how they do so well at what they do. So uh, with that, I'm going to hand the baton over to Lance to introduce himself, and we'll move along down the line. Awesome. So my name is Lance Lee. Um, I'm a digital marketer and content creator. Um, right now, I specialize in the service industry, in particular restaurants, bars, nightclubs. And I'm hyper-local. Um, I've bounced around Vancouver and Seattle a little bit, trying to see what works out there for me. Um, but I found my spot here, and I'm very comfortable here. And so. Um, I specialize in that niche in regards to like photography, mobile first video, um, social media marketing, uh, SEO optimization, things like that. Good morning, everyone. My name is Christina Snow. I am a proud Murrow alumna. Uh, I am co-founder of Heart and Social. We're a digital marketing agency out of Tacoma. And we focus on a lot of small businesses and um, solo entrepreneurs like real estates and whatnot and help them brand and market their business. And um, this last fall, I got to be a guest lecturer and mentor for um, a couple of Rebecca Cooney's classes. And we've been working with one group in particular to do some pretty fun things. Hi. Is this on? Okay. Hi, I'm Sailor Rosima. Um, I'm a senior here. And I also run my own photography business. I'm doing quite a few senior photos of some of the people in this room. I also have monetized my social media accounts. So I uh, make content for companies that contact me. And I also uh, specialize in visual content for a few tech companies. Hello. <clears throat> Thank you all for being here. I'm Brianna Perry. I'm also co-founder and creative director for Heart and Social. Christina is my partner, um, also a proud Murrow alumna, and um, served also. So in our business, I focus mostly on creative direction and branding and web design, um, as well as strategy and um, digital marketing, social media, content creation, and things of that nature. Um, I, I mainly specialize in, um, you know, visual identities and, and visual concepts and, um, you know, making sure that all of the brands, including ourselves, are, you know, very aligned with their values and showing up, you know, consistently across all touch points. And um, I've also had the pleasure and honor of um, serving as a mentor to current Murrow students. Um, shout out to, um, you know, Comstrat76. Com um, but yeah, and I'm also just um, recently decided that I will be um, attending next fall as a grad student here in, at Murrow. That's fantastic. Uh, well, thank you for introducing yourselves. Uh, I'm really excited to start and dive in and learn more about each of you. Uh, so let's take a second to um, converse and explore the topic um, that is pertinent today, entrepreneurship and communication. Um, all of you are very well versed in that, and I think we have a lot we can learn. So I have a series of questions that I'm going to ask you, uh, and we'll just um, kind of casually, um, I'll ask you to answer them as you feel led. And additionally, um, for the audience, uh, the panel members have been eager to hear from each of you. And so what we're going to do is go ahead and ask you to raise your hand if you have a question at any point in this discussion. OK? So we'll keep it very casual and fluid. And hopefully, you'll have the opportunity to get your questions answered from the experts. So um, with that, I'm going to dive in and start by asking you to tell us about your journey in communication. 
Uh, how did you end up working as an entrepreneur? Maybe give us a little background um, beyond what you've already told us and tell us how you got here. All right, so my, my background, my story started while I was in the Murrow College as well. Um, a handful of years ago, I was in the journalism program and marketing and photography kind of were a happy accident. Um, I was super involved in the Daily Evergreen and a bunch of other programs when I was a sophomore freshman and just picked up photography while doing that because it was a useful part of my, my journalism experience. Um, and social media, I was already pretty active on it personally, so that became an extension of what I was doing with the Evergreen and what I was doing in my classes. Um, but I was also in the service industry. That's kind of how that became my niche now. Um, my bosses and my, and my peers noticed my talent and asked me to help out with things in regards to marketing those businesses. And my first job was actually the Coog that had a social media presence, but it wasn't a terribly strong presence. And I'm sure a lot of you know the Coog. If you don't, it's right off campus. It's super old. It's like 90 years old now. Um, but it's, it was a really cool space to learn outside of the classroom and be offered a job, which I never thought that I would, I would get into marketing. I really wanted to be a journalist. That's possibly something that can happen in my future. But opportunities were thrown at me, and relationships were building. And I'm a very relational person. So that's where once people were, I grew up super low income. So any amount of money thrown at me, I was like, yeah, please. I can barely pay my bills with the service industry stuff. Let's get extra gigs doing photos and doing social. Um, and then once proving myself there, it just kind of snowballed into more work and more word of mouth through both social and what I was sharing on social, but also the relationships that I was building. And so that gave me more opportunities outside of Pullman as well. That ended up making me realize how much I missed Pullman and wanted to be here. Um, but the, the Coug network, not even just the, the Coug, but the, the Cougar Spirit WSU network, the alumni network is huge. Um, and global, and so that kind of got me to go play around a little bit in across Washington and in Oregon and Idaho and Wyoming and Arizona and things like that, and really be able to um, not necessarily make a ton, but have a really like fruitful and happy lifestyle. And so I've been doing that for actually this time ten years ago is when I visited Pullman for the first time. So the last decade, and I'm, there's plenty of opportunities that I haven't tapped into yet. Um, and, and who knows if, if marketing is it being the entrepreneurial space I stay in forever, um, but being eager with those relationships and being eager for work and creative outlets in general, is, that's my background and that's the direction that I've been headed and working with teams and collecting people that work well with me and work well with the relationships that I've built is also a huge part of my um, journey in this space as well. So my journey to being an entrepreneur, uh, so I'm a 2018 grad, and as a lot of you will are, are doing now or are about to do, I graduated, I started before, and before graduating applying for jobs and trying to find something, and I actually uh, found a job at a small agency in Tacoma through the Murrow Jobs uh, Facebook page. Uh, Brian, so Brianna's a couple years older than me, and the agency she was working at, she had put up a posting and that's what I found and applied. So we worked together for a year and a half at this other small agency, kind of covering all, you know, web design, SEO, social media, and um, it was a very small team. I ended up taking over like our QuickBooks and accounts payable, which never thought I would have to do, but kind of at a small agency, you have to wear a lot of hats. And we kind of outgrew the space. We got a lot of great experience and learned a lot, but we wanted to try something different. So we both were applying for different jobs and nothing was quite sticking. So we had a lot of support and encouragement from our families. And they all said, hey, you basically run the place that you work now. Why not go out on your own and you know, do it? You have the passion, you have the skills. And so at the beginning of 2020, we got our business license and got all of our stuff, all our ducks in a row, and uh, started working. We put, in, we put in our two week notice at the beginning of March. We started the middle of March, right in the middle, right at the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. And it, it was honestly a really great time to start because so many businesses needed to be online. They needed to have, you know, recognizable branding. They needed to have a great website and great social media. And we've just kind of been building our network ever since. Is there anything you want to add to that, Bree? Yeah, so I, um, 
studied, you know, advertising. I also um, got my degree in fine arts because I knew as I was going through the Murrell program, I initially started out as a journalism um, major as well, and then, you know, quickly transitioned into um, strategic communication and advertising, and then ultimately led me to I've always been a very creative person. Um, I used art, I've used art as an outlet in my entire life. Um, so ultimately I was using my fine arts you know, minor and some of the, the supplementary courses as you know, something that, to keep me sane and make me happy. And it led to you know, eventually me double ma deciding to double major. And a lot of the, um, the things that I learned in Murrow, especially in some of Rebecca's classes and some of the upper level classes, um, and then also participating in advertising club. Um, I was you know, in a sorority as well as um, I did cable eight and a couple other things. I learned more about the creative side of communication and I don't think, like traditionally, I think that a lot of the staff and faculty and professors here are doing a, a way better job of making that known. Um, I ultimately didn't learn a whole lot about it until I went on these agency tours you know, with Advertising Club and got to see the creative side of things. So that opened my eyes to a lot of different avenues as far as my career and, and what I wanted to do. And I knew that, you know, ultimately, I loved working with people and communicating and working on teams and having that collaborative environment. Um, Christine and I, throughout our, our career and, and our journey as entrepreneurs and starting our own business, have struggled with the, like, isolation of it all and, you know, having to uh, adjust to these virtual meetings when we're used to being in person. And, you know, I love, you know, um, observing people and learning their, you know, their, like, watching their facial expressions and their movements. So that was something that definitely was a little bit challenging at first. But, yeah, ultimately, we... I worked at a couple like small I worked at a couple like smaller businesses in their like marketing department per se, but it was really like a one, two person gig. And as you all know, that's traditionally how it works. Um, and then ended up working at um, a f small full service agency in downtown Tacoma, which was, I mean, very beneficial, I think, to a lot of the skills that that you need to have as an entrepreneur because, you have to wear many hats and you have to learn a lot of skills and and ultimately a lot of like the underlying theme I feel like that I've learned like all throughout yesterday and talking to some of you know these amazing um, professionals in this space is that you have to be willing to do all do it all you have to be willing to step in and and learn and try new things and that led me to ultimately learning web development and search engine optimization and all of the other things that really play nicely um, <clears throat> with you know, the creative concept and branding and, and social media marketing that I, you know, kind of started out with, but yeah. Um, so for me, I grew up really obsessed with influencers. Like, I loved YouTube in 2016. Like, I was obsessed with Bethany Moda, O2L, all those people, and I was so jealous. Like, I really wanted to go on the brand trip, so I wanted the PR, and so on TikTok, kind of became a thing my freshman year of college. I was like, well, all these ordinary people are getting millions of views, why can't I do that? So I started randomly uploading videos on TikTok and like all of a sudden I was on a drive to Spokane and my phone was blowing up and I was like, oh my God, I have fi like five million views on a video. And with that came uh, the Creator Fund. So suddenly I was like making money off of videos. And then, I don't know if you guys know this, but if you have a video that doesn't have copyrighted content in it, you can sell it to companies. And they'll take your video and they'll sell it to other media organizations. Like you see TikToks on the news. The news has to buy those videos. So all of a sudden I was selling videos and making like shopping money for, for just from my camera roll. And I realized if I could build my own audience, why couldn't I do this for other businesses. And like you guys said, during the pandemic, I think every single business realized they will not survive without a social media presence. So if I could build my own presence, I could also sell myself and go to these businesses and say, hey, you guys need help. I'm good at what I do, let me help you. And so I found myself in the pandemic suddenly doing social media for a dietitian firm, um, a hair salon, and like a small tutoring company. And suddenly I was like, wait, I actually love creating content. This could be my job. And now it is. Wonderful. Thank you all. Um, so you've segued really nicely into my next question. 
Uh, so if you were to choose maybe two or three attributes or skills that you think someone needs in order to be an entrepreneur, a uh, creator, someone who's um, really you know, pioneering their own journey right, in the communication industry, uh, what would those attributes be and why, or skills for that matter? Go ahead. For me, I think the two attributes you need the most are confidence and you need to be brave. Um, I came from a really small town where like just being out of out of place kind of weird was, you know, will gossip behind your back. And posting on social media is terrifying because people can send that to other people and all of a sudden everyone you went to high school with is gossiping about your TikTok account. But if you just keep doing it, suddenly it's a huge platform that you can have confidence in. So I feel like just pushing yourself out of the box and being brave, doing what makes you happy, and not being afraid of rejection has really helped me be an entrepreneur. Um, I'd have to say, so I gave this some thought, because um, you know a lot of the sessions I attended yesterday were like really thought-provoking and honestly very um, affirming in some of the things that I think come with being an entrepreneur and that, that comes with some um, comparison um, and some imposter syndrome. So I feel like um, definitely confidence for sure. Um, resilience, um, you have to be a risk taker. You have to be willing to take risks. And, and when I say risk, I mean like calculated risks, right? Like you're assessing, you know, the probability of, of success in a lot of situations, but um, definitely passion, because that's what's going to fuel you when you, on the really hard days when you're like, why am I doing this? I hate this part, as, especially as an entrepreneur, because you have to do a lot of the things that you don't necessarily love, um, and that for me is a lot of the um, paperwork and <laughs> all of those things. Um, and I, so, yeah, I definitely think being a risk taker, having a passion and a lot of um, self-awareness. It takes a lot of self-awareness. Um, yeah. Yeah, I would, I would also like to add that a lot of, like, you got to have really strong problem solving and research skills because there's things not only in whatever, you know, space you decide to occupy, just being up to date on all that, but also, you know, learning all the ins and outs of getting a license, doing your taxes, you know, payroll, uh, figuring out research on how to price myself and you know how to be competitive in the market for my skill set. We had to do a lot of, you know, we would join a Facebook group for you know business owners, social media managers, brand designers, and network with a lot of those people. But when you're in those kind of groups, you can kind of you know see their profiles, and a lot of them will have links to their website, and you can kind of see. You know, this is what they're emphasizing. This is what they're, you know, a lot of them have pricing on there. This is what they're charging. This is kind of some of their history. Oh, yeah, I kind of, you know, me and this person are very similar. So, you know, I, if I want to price myself this way or, you know, market myself this way, then it's very in line with the market. And so just kind of going to the next level and taking the extra steps to educate yourself on all, all aspects because, I mean, a lot of people are by themselves. We're lucky to have, a, I'm lucky to have a partner because she compliments all of my weaknesses and vice versa. And, but we both just are always looking to find out as much information about anything that we can. So that's probably my biggest skill to say you're gonna have. Uh, be okay with failing. <laughs> you're gonna fail a lot. I think that's the biggest skill set that I've had to develop that I'm thankful for. Like my anxiety is up here like all the time, like all the time. <laughs> Um, and so, I mean, getting good at what I've been doing has been failing a lot in the classroom is a really safe space to do it. And being in a college town is a safe space to do it. Um, the real world's even scarier to fail in, especially when you got like a million eyes on, on what you're doing or yourself. Um, but getting really good at, at failing and, and rebounding from it well and explaining why you fail and, and, and how that's influencing what you do, um, I believe is really important. I've seen it be really important, not only for myself, but um, I hire a lot of you in town for the restaurants and bars that I work for. Um, and it's scary when you go from like, I have only like 500 followers or on my like private account and like maybe 1500. So like I'm not an influencer, but I still have a lot of eyes on the accounts that I'm on. Um, and having them work with me there, it's representative of me as well. And all of us working together, there's a lot of room for, for mess ups and there's a lot of room for, for things to look ugly. 
um, but leveraging that for your work as well and kind of like owning your own narrative too. Like our 20s are hard. Um, life is hard in general, no matter what age you are, but 20s especially, mental health is, is a huge thing. A lot of us are, are more aware of and talking about now, and it's even harder in a college town and harder with, with the work that we're doing in our classrooms and our lifestyles outside of the classroom. And so being able to leverage that for both your public image as well as your work um, is huge. And then taking that into the future with agency work and mm -hmm. influencer work. And it even goes as far as like the stuff you're doing with your family and when you, when you settle down and things like that. Um, you're never gonna stop failing. I fail multiple times a day. I failed three times this morning before getting here. Um, so being being really, if not comfortable, used to it and just okay with being scared all the time. Like, it's just a part of existing. So getting really good at using fear as a skill set, failure as a skill set. Yeah, just do it scared. You're never gonna be ready. You'll never be ready. You'll never have the perfect plan. There's no way to predict what's gonna happen and you just gotta go for it. You gotta have guts. If you like movies, Dungeons and Dragons actually like half of their message is about failing. So if you want to go have fun and get hyped, it'll tell you all about failing. Uh, thank you. Well, I appreciate the transparency and I'm going to ask you to be even more transparent. Uh, tell me about a day in the life of a calm consultant or entrepreneur. So how does that look? Um, how do you keep your schedule to allow for success? What does it look like when you're not on the job or on the clock, right? So give us an idea of what that looks like. Um, day in the life, entrepreneur, 24-7, 365. I mean, it's even when I'm not working, I am working because I'll be, you know, trying to take a break and I'm scrolling my social media and I see something and I'm like, oh, this would be great for us. This would be great for my client. Save, send an email, send an Instagram, you know, message so that I remember later. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm kind of more of like an early riser and kind of get things rolling. So I'll, I'll get up. It's honestly been kind of hard, the, you know, working out of my house. I have had to develop a little bit more of a routine because there will be a lot of days where I'm just in my pajamas all day. And I look at the clock and I'm like, oh, it's four. And I've not talked to another single human being in the world. And I'm just <laughs> in my sweats and I should probably eat something. Uh, but get up. I try and, you know, make a hearty breakfast, get put on some different kind of clothes, uh, check a lot of emails, start, you know, there's always client fires that pop up any time of day. Whether, you know, I might open up my inbox in the morning and I have a bunch, or it's 7 p.m. at night and one of our client's websites has gone down, or SOS, I'm trying to post this on my Instagram, but it's not like formatting right, what am I doing wrong type things. Um, but we utilize a project management software, which, is a sent, has been essential for not only keeping ourselves organized, but communicating with our clients. We add them onto it, and then that's where all our communication happens. We share files, we share updates, so that they get peace of mind of, oh, things are getting done, this is what's happening, and the process. And it's just a lot, you know, I have my days planned out, but a lot of times, especially when you're working for clients, things come up and you have to kind of reshift and organize things around. Well, I'm a student here, so I go to my one class a day, and then I take a nap. Um, but I think for me, what really helps is just consuming social media like crazy. My screen time is 14 hours a day. Um, but it really helps, because I know everything that's going on on every single platform, and it, I don't know, it makes me feel like I'm an expert in the field, even though I'm probably not. But um, I think what really helps me is prioritizing break time because I burn out really fast. When you work um, on a, and something that you also like to do for fun, suddenly you hate it. Like I, when you're staring at your phone so much, suddenly my eyes like burn, like they tear up because I've been staring at my phone for so much. So I really like to take time to take breaks. I like to bake and cook a lot because it forces me to stay off of screens. Um, but yeah, I just like to take a lot of breaks because otherwise I don't think I could last in this industry at all. Uh, I echo a lot of, of what they what they say. I think staying calm is different for everybody. Like I said before, my anxiety is through the roof all the time. Um, so something I didn't learn until about a year and a half ago, two years ago, is just like how important self-care is, however that looks for you. Um, so like actually sleeping. I think I slept like two hours a night in college. Like that was not good. I drank a lot, ate a lot, like got through college, got degrees, which is cool. 
um, got jobs, but like didn't feel good. And I think that's what led to most of my burnout still does when I don't take care of myself. Um, so a lot of, of downtime and self-preservation actually makes me as a creative and my teams when I encourage it with my teams, them as creatives, them as, as marketers, them as ad managers, whatever it might be, um, their, their productivity level is so much higher in the short amount of time that we have to spend together um, simply because they're actually taking care of their brain and they're taking care of their heart. They're taking care of, they're able to breathe and, and, and collect themselves better. So that's how I stay calm in most situations is just working ahead of time, taking care of myself so that like I'm not losing my shit. It, it works out a lot better. So I have a little bit of a different perspective. Um, one thing that's very, very important to me is balance. Um, I have two small children and a husband and an animal and a lot of plants to take care of. <laughs> so there's a lot of a lot of other things and multiple, I have a multiple jobs outside of my job as an entrepreneur. Um, but Balance is a huge thing. I have to be very intentional about my time, which means I have to be very organized, which doesn't always work when you're a creative and I'm, you know, slightly, you know, ADHD at moments and I have I have to keep myself like focused and find moments where I can really um like be in alignment with whatever I'm doing. Um and for me what that looks like is I mean, I start I'm a I, I function, I'm a night owl, so I function better at night when, like, the world is asleep and I can really just, you know, focus. And I know a lot of people in my life are morning people, and my, my partner happens to be one of those. So one other reason why we complement each other really well, because we do, you know, we are the yin, yin to each other's yang. And um, for me, it's definitely this, I mean, my saving grace is this project management tool, especially once you start growing and evolving, it's, it becomes really hard. Um, I've got a lot of different calendars that I work off of on a daily basis, and I share those calendars with people. I send my husband calendar invites now, and, and that's what works for me, because if it's out of sight, it's out of mind. So yeah, a day in the life for me looks like I, the flexibility of being an entrepreneur is great, but like Christina said, it's really a 24 hour, 365 day thing. I mean, I'm I'm taking time to be here with you guys today and I've got a website that went down and I've got all these other things that I have to take care of. And so, you know, a lot of times what that looks like is me doing work really late into the evening. Um, and I don't necessarily let my clients know that a lot of the time because then they'll take advantage of that. So I, I, I have to set parameters for myself. I, I don't respond to emails after like dinner time, really, like six o'clock is like my latest, unless it's an absolute dire situation. But I really have to like set boundaries um, with myself and with my clients. Um, and I have to be intentional about the time that I spend doing the creative work um, and being in an environment that allows for me to be creative because having that, um, What's the word? What, like the just the creative block is is a big a big thing, especially as a mother and a wife, um, because I want to be all things to all people, <laughs> and you can't. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what it looks like in my life. Thank you. Um, so again, you segued nicely into this. Uh, so what technology do you currently use that's helpful um, in, in bolstering your entrepreneur creativity and productivity? And perhaps what could everyone in the audience be learning or looking into um, as far as technology is concerned that would help them prepare for a career like this? So I've had the pleasure of working um, with Anna Wheatley and the Murrow marketing team. Um, a lot of the graphics that you see here today are, are mine. And um, one of the things that I've learned both from being in this position, but also like in, in our business is, is being um, flexible. And, and like I said, like really having to learn all areas of everything, especially when you're an entrepreneur or you're working in a small team, you need to know some design fundamentals. If that's not your strong suit, that's okay. But there's lots of tools now and one of our favorite, I mean, as a designer, I've, you know, I'm a big Adobe Creative Cloud gal, um, but Canva is also my, my bestie. And there's a lot of really amazing things that, um, 
I started using Canva at the beginning of my career in 2015, and just to see how it's evolved um, even until today, it's been like such a game changer, especially for my partner, Christina, because she's always like, I need help. I can go in there and I can really, you know, set the foundation for her and then she can run with, you know, the templates and the things that I create. Um, and it really helps um, create that balance for, for her and I. Um, but yeah, Canva, another thing that we've come to learn is that it's very important to understand like the sales. So like we are marketers, but like really understanding the sales and marketing portion of it. Um, and I think sales training is super important as, as an entrepreneur because you're going to have to be persuasive. You're going to have to, you're going to have to, you know, figure out ways to communicate, you know, how, why someone needs you, why, like what appeals to them, find out, you know, you know, what they're feeling and, and how, and how you can help them. Um, I think that's a big, big thing, but yeah, Canva, um, Adobe, and that's something that people are like, how do you, how'd you learn how to do that? YouTube. That's it. YouTube. Don't pay a bunch of money for a bunch of classes. Just watch YouTube. Yeah, I, I 100%. I mean, I live and die by, by Canva, and there's so many new, I mean, they just rolled out all this wonderful AI stuff that's going to be game-changing for marketers, whether they be like us, entrepreneurs, or just even in-house people. Um, another thing I would really suggest that you kind of look into and like a skill to work on is uh, look at social media f with like a business in mind because we're all used to you know scrolling and looking at the things that we like and you know sharing things that are personal but for a lot of people our age um, whether you do this on your own or you go work for a company the young people oh you're going to be the social media manager you're the social media you know whatever and it's kind of a little bit of a shift to like go from posting for yourself personally to a business. So just as you're casually perusing your, you know, TikTok or Instagram or whatever, you know, look at things that are trending and think, oh, how could this be applied to a business? You know, X, Y, you know, whatever it may be. And because that's a lot of what I spent, I spend a lot of my days doing is scrolling and like figuring out how I could apply this for us or our clients. Um, also, if you are interested in being an entrepreneur, I think, learning some sort of like book like finance software like not like like quickbooks quickbooks has been my my saving grace i do everything through our quickbooks um and even just watching youtube videos about it and they're not the most entertaining but they're very helpful and just getting familiar with something like that i think is really helpful i totally agree with canva i used to be a huge adobe Die Hard, and I also edit a lot of videos, and I love Final Cut Pro X. The only problem with that is that it locks you into your computer, your laptop, and all of a sudden you're on your phone, and you're like, wait, I need to do this video right now, and but I have to go home and charge my laptop and then edit it there. So mobile apps have been a game changer for me, so that way I can edit no matter where I am, because let's be real, I, my phone is glued to my hand besides right now. Um, Additionally to that, I really think Sprout Social, it's not really a software, but it's just like a fantastic resource for analytics and um, seeing the analytics behind social media, how your platform is doing, your engagement rates, anything like that. Um, I really find that when you pitch to a company like, hey, I want to make this video for you on this platform, the company's going to be like, why? And so you want to be able to have analytics to back up like, well, 60% of millennials use Facebook. And just having little statistics like that really gives you validity when you're pitching to a company. Um, my answer is very specific to me, but audiobook apps, um, I like a lot. I, I think my favorite tool or, or tech or whatever you wanna call it um, is listening to other people speak and understanding as much as I can about the world is what makes me good at what I do. Especially as things change so much, there's so many apps to create with and there's so many um, tools to use and, and AI is a controversial thing and everybody wants to talk about that and it's the biggest thing since the internet or whatever but like I, I will study sociology I'll study how Twitter started Facebook started what was big with the internet because I was I was born in 94 so I don't really know how that started I didn't live through it like uh, some people in this room have and and got to work through so understanding how humans work understanding how we work individually or, or in a group understanding just things about the world um, seem to go a long way and, and it goes a long way in predicting what next steps to take to um, and like and actually keeping a job and, and being useful 
um, and, and being prepared and not afraid of whatever's next and, and what's been happening. So audiobooks are great. There's a lot of other tools. You can listen to stuff on Spotify, YouTube. You mentioned YouTube. You can listen, whatever, whatever app or whatever tool gets you to listen to someone else speak, you can listen to it at like five times speed. If you can listen to people talk fast, that's what I do. Um, and just consume as much as you can. But like that, that stuff's pretty, pretty great and pretty useful. And it goes a really long way, helps you kind of also hone in your own niches and makes what special about you uh, work for your marketing stuff. Um, we use Basecamp, and we we used it a little bit at our old the old place that we worked at, um, but really leaned into it heavily, um, starting our own thing in the last couple of years. And it's and they've done a lot to uh, update it even since we started. But yeah, we like Basecamp. <laughs> at the agency that we worked at, I was there for a few years before um, Christina came in, and we actually used a lot of project management tools. Um, every year, in fact, he wanted to change. And Basecamp is the only one that I felt really um, worked, and mainly, you know, I think what happens a lot of the time with project management tools is that everyone's always looking for an all-in-one um, solution, and that's just not possible. So really just committing to one and learning the ins and outs of it. Um, and then obviously over the course of the three years that we've been in business, and then in addition to that, the couple years that I was able to you know, play around with it, if you stick around, all of the features that you want eventually happen because yeah. everything's evolving and technology is always advancing. So um, yeah, and... I, I live, and, live and die by my project management tool. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, I'm going to pivot a little bit to hiring. Um, if you do hire or if you do like to collaborate um, in your entrepreneurial activity. Um, so what are some specific uh, criteria, perhaps, that you're looking for when you are looking to hire someone or to work with someone or collaborate with someone in your, in your space? Um, so we, so Brianna and I have yet to hire an employee, but we've done a lot of hiring of um, referrals and people that we work with, and also I think you could call it hiring of clients. Um, and we we like to align ourselves with people who have very similar goals and um, like ethics and morals. So we want we align with a lot of people that. Um, have hard work ethics and integrity, and they always are striving to, you know, provide the best quality product or service, but and also kind of stay up to date on, you know, what is trending in their industry, best practices, um, because we, you know, our name and their name is on it, and we like to provide the best that we can for our clients. So we have a couple of referral partners that we work with, and. Um, you know, if they if we wouldn't want them to do something for us, then we we're not going to let them do something for our clients, and so that's a really big, a really big thing for us. Um. I heard this thing the other day. I think it was on some TikTok I watched, but it was about. Um, it's like my toxic trait is thinking that I can do anything, and I, I mean, hey, with Google, I mean, everyone's like, how would you learn that? I'm like, Google, YouTube, just find out like if you if you're interested in it and you and you care about it enough you'll do that and so I really I always like when we are searching for partners for example you know we worked at a full service agency that had um, you know a lot of web development and search engine optimization and some of the things that and like a lot of the um, like Google AdWords and, and things like those services that we don't necessarily focus all of our energy on at Hard and Social. Um, so we partner with people who align in the sense of our, our values um, and integrity, but also people who are like forward thinkers and they're they're open to change and, and how and what the future is looking like and adapting to that. Because what we've found is that a lot of people are just so, in, they're not flexible. They're, they're, they're not able to pivot. People are uncomfortable with change. And as an entrepreneur, you need to be comfortable with change and you need to be able to adapt. So um, when we're looking for people that we work with, it's definitely like those qualities. People who are you know, open-minded and, and positive and forward thinking and yeah. Um, I hire a lot locally for, for the restaurants and bars, so a lot, of, it's a lot of times it's case by case, so not everything is consistent in what I'm looking for. Each time, whether it's a photographer or a videographer or 
someone managing ads or being an account exec or whatever. Um, but what I have noticed is consistent when I'm in interviewing individuals and looking for someone who's compatible to work with me, but as well as the businesses I'm working with, um, is a willingness to communicate and, and be vulnerable. And that's something that's a little tricky to decipher in only one or two interviews. Um, but it's something that's at least really important for me in the way that I work with teams because um, knowing whether you're you're willing to, to learn through the job, which isn't always a luxury for a lot of jobs, like there's not a lot of education given, but at least with the stuff I do and when working with um, other college students, there, there needs to be a little bit of an educational component. Um, but knowing whether they're going to communicate with me, whether they're going to communicate with the people that I'm reporting to, um, the people that they're collaborating with, whether they're going to be vulnerable about their, their mental health state, um, their physical health state, if they have a family emergency, things like that, instead of doing what I did when I was in college, which was just put my head down, be quiet, and try and deal with it, that's when you burn out, that's when you let people down, that's when you everything just kind of becomes a little unhinged. And so making sure that um, the, the people being brought on are, they're obviously recruited for a specific skill set, but are able to work both independently and collectively, because that can really mess things up, both short-term and long-term, and there's not a lot of time for that. There's not a lot of luxury for that. Um, it's a waste of a lot of resources and, and money and things like that. So um, that's particularly what I look for when I'm, I'm recruiting someone, someone who's willing to speak with me um, and be vulnerable and open. Um, I've never actually hired someone to work for me, but I have consulted companies on hiring influencers to work for them. And really what I look for is just a really high return on investment because influencers are expensive. Um, I remember I really wanted to hire this influencer for a tech company because I thought she'd make fantastic videos for us. And her rates were like $10,000 for two videos, two 30 second TikToks. And I was like, it's a lot of money, but I think she'll get us like maybe a few million views. So I think it's worth it. And I had looked at her TikToks from like a week ago, but I hadn't noticed that like recently she had posted some videos that weren't that good. And so we spent the money and <laughs> the videos did not do well. Um, so now I really want to make sure that people I work with will actually do a good job at what they are saying that they're going to do. And then also I really just kind of echoing what everyone else has said, I really want them to have a good personality because if I'm working with them and I'm spending time with them, I don't want to have a bad time. I don't want to have a bad day working with them. So yeah, that's it. One last point to that is that and I think they mentioned, I forgot which panel or which panel it was yesterday, but that it takes, you know, 10 years, decades to like build your reputation and only, you know, 10 minutes, especially now with, you know, cancel culture and, and people's access to leaving reviews, like really making sure that you're working with people and selecting people based on like a shared core value is important because your reputation is at stake. And for us, when we seek out you know, service providers like SEO um, workers and digital ad placers and things like that, we want to make sure, because we are the liaison between us and them and our client, um, but we want to make sure that they're going to do quality work because at the end of the day, we have to answer for that and we have to take responsibility for it, so it's important. Wonderful, thank you. Um, so we have a couple more questions in about 15 minutes. So um, just a reminder to the audience, if you have questions, um, go ahead and start raising, yes, raise your hand. Okay, Rebecca, yeah? Yeah, go for it. Do you have a question? Yes. Because <laughs> it's gonna end. So I'm making more of a statement than a question. So I've had all of these students, all of them. <laughs> They're amazing. Okay, so, Brianna is class of 2015, Sailor class of 2023, Christina 2018, Lance 2017 and 2018. Just letting you know. <laughs> so special things they will not say about themselves, Brianna is a brilliant designer. Brilliant, okay. Sailor, she has seven million likes, 80,000 followers on TikTok, find her. One of her videos has 40 million views. Just saying, come on, that's crazy. Christine is a brilliant project manager, and Lance is a brilliant product photographer and team builder. So you're not gonna say that about yourselves, but I'm gonna say it anyway. <laughs> anyway, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, thanks Rebecca. Yes, okay, question over here.
Um, well, I recently did social media for a tech company, and I'm an advertising major, so I don't know anything about uh, tech at all. Like, I was in meetings with the software engineers, and I was like, I have no idea what's going on right now. And I also actually just got hired as social media manager for the building industry of Washington State. And once again, I'm an advertising major. I have no, no idea what's going on with the building industry. Um, but really, it's just committing a lot of time to understanding, um, you know, the ins and outs of the industry and kind of doing your best to learn their language. And also, I would say that as an outsider to both these industries, I think being an outsider can really help you because now you know how to, now you know what people are looking at, how the, what the perception is of them from the outside and how you can make their content more accessible because you can't make a TikTok or you can't make an Instagram story like explaining all the code and stuff, but you can say, hey, this technology is awesome and I use it and you should do, you should do it too. So. Okay, so um, at the agency that we were, well, actually, when I first started, I worked in the marketing department for a gun holster making company, which that was interesting because I didn't know anything about guns or anything of that nature. And so um, what that looked like is a lot of research, and um, ultimately, that job experience was not a great one for me, but working in the um, agency that Christine and I worked at together, we got to experience a lot of really niche um, a truck driving company. Yes. Yeah, so what, what do you company, post for a, logging, a truck driving company? A logging company. So they manufactured trim, um, treated trim. And <laughs> we got to work with chiropractors and dentists and... A mobile denture lab. Yeah. <laughs> they would drive around and clean and repair and create dentures for elderly people. And they had trucks that would just drive around. <laughs> yeah. um, so one of the things that has helped a lot and the, one of the things that we've learned is really one asking a lot of questions and and listening like really well to the, the things and reading between the lines a little bit when you're immersing yourself in in those um, industries but also i like working with them to identify who their like um target audience is but more specifically like creating like client like or you know avatars customer avatars because what that does is it allows you to kind of get in the head of those people and you know what do they value you know where do they work like what are the things that they are interested in and that ultimately gives you the bigger picture of how to serve them um, but yeah it takes a lot of research and a lot of curiosity for sure yeah and I, and I also think figuring out kind of the the terminology and and the things within the industry that every like those who are in it understand but and they think is communicating something very clear to their audience but in fact their audience has no idea the value or the meaning or you know whatever and figuring out kind of what those you know pain points are and explaining them to the general population, to the target audience, so that they have a better understanding of the value that the company brings. Oh, questions? Yeah. Yeah. You, wanna, you want the mic? I think I'm good. You're good? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so Sailor kind of touched on this a little bit about having a video presence that you made that didn't do so great. So have either of you guys had a project where Yeah, we we get a lot uh, a lot of projects and a lot of clients where that'll happen. You know, you put in a lot of work and a lot of planning, and you think something's going to turn out fabulous, and it, it flops. And then you know, sometimes you'll just have a spur of the moment inspiration, and you put together a video, and it, it blows up. So it's all just kind of, you know, you have to roll with the punches a little bit. And um, we we have one client who. Uh, we have a lot of these instances, but I found that constant communication. I mean, I have monthly meetings with clients to be like, okay, this is what we did. This is what did well. This is what didn't what do well. This is what I need from you. Because a lot of times we have to communicate two, three times on the things that we need to make our job run smoothly and to deliver results. And so it's a lot of, a lot of patience, a lot of, you know, taking a deep breath, stepping away, um, 
finding a good confidant to be like, okay, I just need a vent for a second. Okay, now I'm good. Okay, I'm going to roll back into it. Um, but yeah, just over, you can't over communicate when you're working with, with people and just, you know, being okay with things flopping, but having an idea of, okay, well, let's try this next. Yeah, this kind of goes to what Lance was talking about earlier and, and not being afraid to fail because especially in regards to social media, um, you think you know, but you have no idea. So one day something works great and the next day it doesn't. Um, so you really have to do a lot of testing and measuring. But that's the beautiful thing is that, you know, there's there's flexibility and there's there's a lot of like freedom in that. Um, like I said, there's trends. There's trends that happen every single day, and there's short windows of time to do things. But one of the the, the like, I guess the tenets of like the content that we create is always like a balance of entertaining, um, education, and and you know engaging content, um, and you know having fun with it. But yeah, we always have to adjust, um, and there's there's always going to be a little bit of disappointment. But I think setting the expectations when you're working with clients that, like, based on this information, because you could do all the research, you could collect all the analytics, all the data, and it could just still not it could still not work out because it's it's unpredictable. So, just setting the expectation is huge, and that's been a big learning lesson for us is making sure you're very clear about and never. Um, I always. Never over promise and under deliver, but you know, over deliver always. <laughs> All right, back here we have another question. Yeah, you guys talked today about taking calculated risks. How do you know when it's time to branch off and do your own thing? Is it maybe lack of upward mobility or just a sudden spark of ambition where you want to do your own thing instead of like a corporate or agency job? I mean, it. It, a lot of it comes down to, I mean, at least for us, just having a very strong support system. And um, the it, it's scary. I mean, it's it's really scary. And you never really, I mean, I never, I never once thought that I would be doing this. And then when we started this, I, I didn't know if I was ready. But I knew that I had people that encouraged me and supported me, and they were there to help, you know, catch me if I fall. It was really helpful to do it with someone else because, you know, then there was another person to bounce our ideas off of. and um, But I, I just think you also just kind of feel it. Like, I mean, you, you feel this desire. And you know maybe you don't want to jump head first and make it your only, your only source of income. You know, there's a lot of really great side hustles, um, you know, affiliate marketing, um, you know, things like that. And you know, just kind of test the waters a little bit and see if that's something that you enjoy and that you're getting some success with. And then you can slowly incorporate that as more of your full time. For me, I feel like, so I do a lot of, another huge thing about, you know, the world that I live in is is always keeping a, keeping an open mind and mindset is a huge part of it because it's really easy for comparison and self-doubt and imposter syndrome and all of those things to creep in. But in a lot of instances in my life, I've always just kept an open mind to new opportunities. And I put myself in scary situations or, or things that might be really uncomfortable. And then I end up learning a lot more about myself. So, and a good example of that is that I went into my agency role and was a social media manager. And I sh like quickly, you know, found needs and gaps within the agency where I could fill. And but I also had curiosity in re in relation to those things, like search engine optimization. And I did have experience with graphic design and some web design. But there were people around me that were much smarter than me and had a lot more experience. So one of the things that I, I hear a lot um, when I'm listening to these, you know, inspirational podcasts and whatnot and from people who are super successful is to surround yourself with people who are like smarter than you and doing amazing things because then you're gonna you're gonna aspire to that and you're going to look at things in a different way for me I felt like at the agency that we were at I was doing things that I felt like were you know appropriate and keeping up with the times and and making our um, agency relevant and we just so happened to work for, you know, a, a boomer, and he was pretty um, closed-minded to a lot of, the, you know, the new technologies and new ways of doing things. So, 
after many months and many job applications later, um, Christina and I, you know, like, like she said, with the support of our family and friends, we're like, why don't you just do it on your own? You're already doing it. And if, if, there is any, is, if there's things that you don't know, you can just figure it out, which also leads me to our opportunity working with, um, you know, Murrow and, and Rebecca Cooney and even her husband in, the, um, in Carson um, becoming mentors to students. And then it's also <laughs> opened up a whole new um, idea for us in, re in regards to becoming um, educators, which has led me to becoming to, you know, wanting to become a grad student so that eventually I could have that option to teach and further that. But I think just being open to any opportunity that comes your way and really surrounding yourself with people who are like, you know, leagues above. All right, we have one more question. Okay. Um, what were the steps or how did you brand and position your company or business to align with your values? And just really quick, we have about three minutes, so short versions, <laughs> if you don't mind. Thank you. Um, so, okay, so before Brianna and I started our business, we would have meetings together, uh, like, you know, after, after working our job or, you know, we'd go to each other's houses. And we started off by just writing a bunch of lists, what we value, what we vision, our goals, you know, for now, five years, ten years, and just getting everything on paper that we, you know, since we decided we want to do this, what do we want our business to stand for? So really getting a clear idea of what you do value and what you want to do, I think is a very important first step. And then um, just positioning yourself online to, you know, to represent that. I mean, our big thing is we, we don't want to, we want to educate and entertain and be with people in the space that are like that. Um, building a network, having a very strong network of, not only referrals, but people you can, um, you know, mentor you and can be confidants and uh, just having them kind of help keep you in check, I think are important pieces of that. Um, something that I really value is just having a really engaging social media presence. And one of the ways I did this with my own social media and with company social media is to get people talking. and. I really only like to work with people that I enjoy being around, so we have the same values, but I just really like to build engaging content. And if that means I have to post a video showing kids that we throw away their letters if they, after they meet Santa, then <laughs> so be it, it got two million views. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I think I really prioritize results. All right, well, I think we're out of time. Um, I wanna give a great round of applause to these rock stars again. Thank you all for coming. And uh, really quickly, before everyone exits, if you wouldn't mind, we're gonna try something a little different, and we're gonna ask that everyone come up and stand in front of the stage before you exit, quick detour. And Rebecca's gonna get a big photo of all of these wonderful Moreau pros and students and grads. Yeah, just stand right here, right along the stage, if you would. Nice work, you guys. Thank you. Yes. That's great. If everyone would just come by the stage really quick. <laughs> yep. Photo. Quick photo op. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh my god. Oh, what does that say? Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Thanks, everybody.
Hey, thank you, everybody.